Farming is a major industry in the United States. There are more than 2.2 million farms that cover the area of 922 million acres. So as you might have guessed, there are also a lot of employees involved in the industry. Without a doubt, high quality work requires quality accommodations for employees, including a respectful salary. Many farmers today are under a lot of stress because there are many aspects of their livelihood that they can't control. In today's video, we'll talk about the reasons American farmers are broke. Before we dive into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of the new videos we post. First, let us talk about how the COVID-19 pandemic affected the farm economy. Like everything else in the world, the farming industry also went downhill because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The new virus is influencing our food system in many ways. Here is what FarmAid writes about this matter. As the need for social distancing closed restaurants, schools, processing plants, and other key markets for farmers, drops in demand and supply chain disruptions forced farmers to plow under fields to produce, dump milk, and even euthanize animals. For farmers growing crops for biofuels or cotton and other fibers, sharp reductions in demand for fuel and clothing tanked prices for their goods, leaving business plans in tatters. Rising unemployment rates and tightening household budgets continue to constrict food consumption and the prices farmers receive. On top of these challenges are labor shortages, border closures across the globe hampering food transport, and costs of implementing safety measures to protect workers and customers from COVID-19. Here are some examples. 1. Customers tend to pay way more for the products, while farmers get smaller payments. After the pandemic started, Started, the overall prices at grocery stores have drastically increased and have gone up 5.6% compared to the year 2019. According to the statistics, it is the largest increase in nearly a decade. While the prices kept increasing, the salary for farmers kept dropping. Compared to 2019, it has dropped by 4.8%. In some cases, the contrast is severe. Beef prices are 25% higher than a year ago, even while livestock prices for farmers fell by 17%. Price fixing by a handful of major meat packers may be driving this problem. Today, farmers receive an average of 14.6 cents for every dollar consumers spend on food, says FarmAid. Number two, the pandemic influenced local farmers more. It's noteworthy that there was an increased demand for local food products during the pandemic. However, because the closure of critical outlets like farmers markets, schools, etc., there was a dramatic drop on the local farmers' income and on their cost. FarmAid writes, one economic analysis estimated a decline of up to $688.7 million in sales across key local and regional markets from March to May 2020, leading to up to $1.32 billion in total loss to the economy from March to May 2020. This particularly harms smaller, socially disadvantaged, and beginning farms and the markets they serve. Unfortunately, federal relief programs have tended to leave out these growers, delivering the lion's share of support to the very largest firms. As you see, COVID-19 really has had a bad impact on this industry. It cost farmers about $20 million in 2020, and around a third of independent farms were closed down because of the loans. Many of you may find it surprising that even before COVID-19, farmers had a negative income. It's important to note that COVID-19 has not actually caused the downturn of the farming industry, but rather worsened it. Things have not been great for farmers for quite some time. Farmers have experienced around a 50% drop in net farm income between 2013 and 2018. The main reason for this was that the prices for many farm products like corn, wheat, dairy, and beef were crushing. Here's what FarmAid mentions in the article. As for 2020, while the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, is forecasting a $19 billion or 22.7% income increase in net farm income this year, government payments like trade bailouts and federal COVID-19 relief programs account for 36% of net farm income, the highest share since 2001 and the eighth highest share since the Great Depression. Without the $22.4 billion provided in government payments, net farm income in 2020 would be well below the sector's average from 2000 to 2019. What's more, the vast majority of payments flowed to the very largest farms. CNBC reports that the top 5% of trade bailout recipients received nearly half of all the $28 billion paid in 2018 and 2019. Perhaps more troubling is USDA's pre-pandemic data. In February, USDA forecast 2020 median farm household income at $1,840, meaning that farm households would lose money from the farm. Most recent USDA data suggests a slightly better median income level, presumably from higher levels of government payments. But even these sector-wide income numbers likely mask severe distress in many parts of farm country, as many farmers who have been squeezed by years of low income did not benefit from federal payments. Most farmers rely on off-farm jobs to feed their families, 
secure health insurance, and keep their farms afloat. Given the pandemic's broader economic impacts, which arrived after farmers have had to dig into their savings for the better part of the last decade, droves of farms are at risk of going under in the next year. Now let us talk about the farm credit conditions. The credit conditions that exist for farmers are very limited. It's one of the reasons why American farmers today are broke. Most of the farmers solely rely on credit to buy the machinery, seeds, livestock, and so on. They have to do it to keep the farm running. As Farm Aid mentions in the article, because most farmers require operating loans at the start of each season, a critical aspect of a farm's financial health relates to its ability to make loan payments on time. Economists utilize various solvency measures to measure this, including the debt-to-asset ratio, debt-to-equity ratio, and equity-to-asset ratio. All of these measures weakened for the eighth consecutive year in 2020. As farm debt continues to rise, the sector's risk of insolvency in 2020 is at its highest level since 2002. It's a struggle for farmers to make loan payments. Loan rates are quite high for farmers. According to Federal Reserve Ag Credit Survey's 2020 second quarter farm economy conditions, the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, which covers Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Wyoming, reports that the volume of delinquent farm real estate and operating loans increased by about 17% and 13% respectively over the past year. The Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago covering Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, and Wisconsin reports that farm loans have very severe repayment problems. It's at 8.3%, the highest seen since 1988. While economists and lenders note that federal relief has helped farmers navigate these conditions, many remain concerned that without more intervention, a wave of foreclosures will strike farm country. These conditions are challenging for all farmers, but beginning farmers, smaller and mid-sized farmers, as well as other disadvantaged farmers in particular, continue to struggle, as written in the Farm aid article. Now let us talk about the consequences of bankruptcies. Following the multiple years of losses, especially considering the pandemic, farmers are forced to make very hard decisions. Many of them are selling their land, livestock, and equipment just to pay their loans. Many farmers choose to retire early, while others declare bankruptcy so they can keep their farms somehow. It's also noteworthy that the suicide rate has alarmingly increased in the farm community. Here is what American journalist Elena Samuels had to write about this matter. Farmers aren't the only workers in the American economy being displaced by technology, but when they lose their jobs, they're also ejected from their homes and the land that's been in their family for generations. It hits you so hard when you feel like you're the one who's losing the legacy that your great-grandparents started, said Randy Recker, a Wisconsin dairy farmer who struggled with depression and whose neighbor, Leon Statz, committed suicide last year after financial struggles forced him to sell his 50 dairy cows. Recker estimates he's losing $30,000 a month. Even large companies are facing unprecedented challenges. Dean Foods, a global dairy producer that buys milk from thousands of small farmers, filed for bankruptcy Tuesday, November 12th and is seeking a sale, a move that could further hamper farmers looking for places to sell their milk. It's surprising that the farming industry has not seen these kinds of losses since the 80s. During the farm crisis in the 80s, there was a Chapter 12 bankruptcy created for family farmers and fishermen. It's an indicator of the level of stress in the farm sector. However, most of the farmers do not file for Chapter 12, so the bankruptcy data we currently have is just the tip of an iceberg. Here is what Farm Aid writes about it. By June 2020, Chapter 12 bankruptcy filings totaled 580, representing an 8% rise from June 2019 levels. The largest increases in bankruptcies came from the Midwest, 23%, Northwest, 70%, and Southeast, 22%, with more than half of filings occurring in the Midwest alone over the last year. Wisconsin, the country's second largest dairy state, had the country's highest number of Chapter 12 filings, 69, between July 2019 and June 2020, followed by Nebraska, 38, Georgia, 36, Minnesota, 36, Iowa, 33, and Kansas, 32. In total, 23 states saw bankruptcy filings rise over the last 12 months, with the biggest increases occurring in Wisconsin, Oregon, and Iowa. On this note, we end our video. These were just some reasons why American farmers are broke. We would like to know your opinion about the video. Don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and press the like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.